Welcome to another episode of Design on Purpose, the Wordplay Studio podcast. We have Clive Sheridan with us tonight. Good evening. Good evening, Clive. Welcome. Thank you. Yeah, good to be here, finally. <laughs> yeah, we finally got him in here. <laughs> yeah. Kicking, screaming. Yeah, no, it's good to be here. Thanks for having me on. No worries. Well, um, it's great to have you here and it's great to have met you in this town, another magical person and great human being of Mwilumba, that well now, well, someone that now calls Mwilumba home like us. Merbarian. Yeah. Merbarian. <laughs> He's a Merbarian. <laughs> <laughs> what, um, yeah, so what, what brought you to Merbar, Clive? Um, <laughs> <laughs> Lundberg Gallery. Uh-huh. Yeah. We were always moving up here. We didn't know what part of the northern rivers, but we knew it was going to be north of Byron and possibly north of Brunswick Heads and what have you. And um, uh, I came up on a road trip about three years ago, see some friends, um, would come up and see them probably twice a year, and then decided to venture further north to that place that no one can pronounce. Mamur, 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 Mawulambar. Or spell. Or spell. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> <laughs> I still have to check my spell. <laughs> yeah. Hang on. Yeah, no, that's correct amount of owls. Um, yeah, and was led to this extraordinary space. And that was how the journey really began in um, September. September the 23rd, 2019, was when I first laid eyes on the space that is now Lundberg Gallery. And it took a further oh, two and a half years to get everything approved, to get the place open. Mm. Which, as you know, we opened on the 28th of May this year. Yeah, to a rather fabulous fanfare and... Yeah, we're now on our halfway or over halfway through our second show, and yeah, it's all going rather well. Did you did you come up here to like? Did you how did you find the space and, um, and Mawillan Bar? Wasn't there like a really interesting story? I remember you told a story about yeah. this. You were kind of guided to the gallery, weren't I you? Was guided. Yeah. yeah. Can Can you tell I us a bit about a, about yeah, that? Yeah, I can. Um, about six weeks before I came up here. I had news from England that my surrogate mother had passed away. She'd been unwell, was in hospital, and someone who was a major part of my life for over 30 years. And at the time, I was, uh, should we say, distressed, heartbroken, and became really unwell. Mm. And ended up in hospital. And when I came out of hospital after about 10 days, I went to my little house in Marrickville and spent pretty much the next 10 days lying on my back, having a private um, yoga teacher come in who I'd studied on and off with for a number of years, giving me a one-on-one -on -one and just yoga nidra and restorative yoga my back had been playing up. And during that time, I was doing more than my usual half hour, one hour meditation a day. I was spending hours meditating each day. And I started to connect with Mary, my surrogate mum. The first time I'd never done this really with anyone in my life. And it was at that time that I realised the power in the c connecting with people who have gone before us and what one is able to do during those times of, um, what's another word for it? Uh, anyway, it was just basically having this very um, audible visual experience with this person who'd been gone 
what, six or seven weeks. So obviously, what, not obviously, but there's a period where it takes time for the spirits to, to cross, cross over. over. Hey, you're not supposed to contact them in that time in, in before, right? Apparently, apparently, and it's not that I was trying to contact this person, you know, I was distressed. I was, I was in deep mourning. Yeah. You know? I've lost a lot of close people in, in, in my time on this wonderful earth. And, and this was probably the last great close, you know, an extraordinary person and being an orphan, you know, was really the, the only person that was left in my life that I revered and, sort of mm -hmm. held in such high regard. And, um, yeah, she had made contact with me during this period. And as clear as we're sat here having this conversation, these, these are the vivid um, activities that I was having with Mary. It was like this. And one night I took a friend out for dinner in Sydney and I could feel something coming on and I wasn't sure what it was. I knew it was going to be a trip. I didn't know where I was going. I didn't, but I could just feel this in my spirit. And it was Saturday, um, probably the penultimate Saturday in September. And I remember thinking, gosh, my birthday in a week or two, I have no idea where I'm going to be, but I'm going to be, I'm not going to be in Sydney. And, um, and I dropped my friend home and then I went and had a late, I don't know, um, coffee in Newtown. And while I was sat on the street at the Pastizzi place, and this is now midnight, gone midnight, the packing up, the crew in there were on first name terms, so just gorgeous and they knew what had happened and they were just are you okay you're gonna be okay I'm, so I'm fine i'm fine i wasn't far from it and i was sat outside on my own and they kind of knew i didn't need any company or didn't want to talk to anyone and while i sat there mary appeared again <laughs> and made it very clear that when i get home i'm to pack the car pack a small studio for the road because I'm going to be on the road for possibly a month and you're going to go somewhere where you haven't been. And I thought that she was telling me to go to this place that was off in northwest central New South Wales. And so when I got home, I looked at the temperature of this place. It's September, so it's, you know, it's spring, but this place is minus five at night. What, where was day. that? Where did you think you were going? It was, um, it was, oh, what's the name of the place? It's, 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 it's um, a series of lakes, these um, dry lakes. Oh, okay, okay. Um, not Menindee. No, well, Menindee's not a dry lake. It's, it's not supposed yeah. to be a dry lake. Oh. That's not, and that's oh, not really gosh. Normal. Anyway, it's, it was 13 like, hours northwest of, of Sydney. Like, in, like out. Out, yeah. out. We're, we're, yeah, we're, we're talking. It's 13 hours nonstop. Yeah, like a, in the so desert. So it's like 18-hour drive. Yeah. So I'd got home and I've packed all this winter gear. I've packed all this stuff that will see me right for a couple of weeks. It's now 2.30 a.m. And I'm getting ready to <laughs> drive off. And Mary says, no, you're not going there. You're going north. You're going north of Byron. What? Are you serious? Are you shitting me? So I unpack all this stuff. Well, it's because I've looked at the temperature again, and it's fine. It's north. It's Byron. It's fine. So pre-pack the car, get in. It's now 3.30, and I head north. And I drove nonstop to brunswick heads my friends there and on the way up i've got a photograph of mary on the dashboard i've got a favorite selection of tunes playing and mary and i having conversations on and off all the way i arrive brunswick heads 5 30 on sunday afternoon my friends are as clive 
they knew that I wasn't in a particularly mm. good way and they made my stay very beautiful and special. And, um, and that night before I went to bed, Mary said, get out your iPad because there's a bunch of places on there. You're going to have a pick of places because you're going to open an art gallery. But she, no, she hadn't made it clear what I was going to do, but she'd made it clear that you're going to take on a, a, a commercial lease on, on a property, but she didn't make it clear. And I still to this day think about that. Why didn't you just go, here's Lundberg Gallery right here now? But I get it why she led me through about five or six different places. And the first place was the little um, the little hall in Mooball. Oh, yeah. The post office. <laughs> That's a cute town too, isn't it? Yeah, 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 yeah. And that was the first place. She led me to that. And I thought, oh, wow. Yeah, great. This, this could work. And this was on the Monday, the Monday after, the Monday morning. And, and at that point, she'd made it clear, you're going to open an art gallery, you know, your second, your second go at it. So I had space in England. And uh, 15 years ago. Anyway, um, I had a look. Uh, the lady who runs the post office showed me this, this space. Thought, this is lovely. It needs a fair bit of work. She said, look, the owners are lovely. They, they're happy to spend money. If you sign a long lease, rah, rah, rah. It's very cheap. And I thought, don't want to be in an old building. My old gallery in England was in a really old building. It's huge issues. It's long term. It's your constantly upkeep, upkeep, upkeep. Over the last few years in Sydney, I decided to move. We lived in old buildings, apartments, houses, and it was always damp issues, mould issues. Then all of a sudden, the penny dropped, and we ended up moving into this beautifully architecturally designed little penthouse in Kensington. My life changed forever. The wonders of living in a brand new space, because, you know, most brand new spaces are soulless, boring, just boxes. But there are beautiful spaces out there, affordable. And lived in this beautiful space and then when i left there i found this beautiful architecturally designed eco uh, two-story house in marrickville which is where i lived and mary had made it clear said you needed to see this space so you know now the benefits of new versus old mm. kept driving in the car off you go she said keep going <laughs> led me to Mwollomba, where I'd earmarked three places, all three brand new, not quite finished. And the first one of three was at Lundberg. There were three at Lundberg, unit one, unit three or four, and then unit five. And when I walked to the end, before we could get to the end of the driveway, as you can see, you know, you've been there many times. You don't actually know that there's a fifth unit. And it's I kind of tucked away, answer, hey? Yeah. Yeah. I, well, I said to him, I said, there's no fifth unit here. He said, ah, that's why I think you'll like it. And then as you go around the corner, bang. You know. And I was probably 20 metres from the front door and I just turned around to him and said, this is it. And he said, what do you mean you haven't even been in? I said, no, this is it. And Mary's going, this is Lundberg. This is the place. We didn't have the name at the time. He said, this is your new gallery. And I went in and the agent, who's the most divine soul, ended up organising for me to have the keys as a lockbox at the front of the units. And I had the keys for the week. And I went there every evening for that week. I'd be there from five, six in the afternoon till 10, 11 at night. And I just sat in the space, and meditated and walked around and documented it. And just, and that's how Lundberg came about. So amazing. <laughs> it is a beautiful space. And, and uh, you know, and I guess, you know, being a new space, 
it's a new energy. It's a fresh energy to it, isn't it? So you kind of can yes. make it really make it your own. Oh, absolutely. And I think, you know, that's that that is the beauty of taking on a brand new space, whether it's a commercial space, a domestic space. Um, it, 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 there's, there's no clearing to be done as such, you know, there's no, you know, oh, there's old energy in that place. There's old entities. There's old, old, old. There's, there was, it was a great platform to launch such a special mm. um, project as Lundberg is. Does Mary show up at all anymore? Does she come to the show? She's she's sort of present, I would say, 70% of the time at, at Lundberg, but I also know now it's – nearly three years and as you know th you you cross over onto much sort of um that's why i can describe this there's an omnipresence but the 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 um the vividness of your connection with someone who's crossed over mm. is nowhere near as vivid and as as powerful uh, and as present as as when when they first um, transition, mm. you know, um, which yeah, I I feel Mary around me all the time, every day. My little meditation mm. table, altar, whatever you want to call it. I have a photograph of Mary on there, and I kiss her every morning and every night, you know, and, and thank her. I you know every morning and every night. I. I believe gratitude is the first thing that we, we mm. should announce as soon as we open our eyes and as soon as we close them at the end of the day. And, yeah, I am so grateful for what Mary is, you know, her presence in, in, in the 35 years or so that we knew each other. And, you know, and she was a few weeks off her 90th birthday. Wow. Yeah, and we've had a lot of time together, you know. Her, her, um, her eldest son's one of my oldest friends, you know. Um, so, yeah, we, we, we had a mad week in driving around northern France in her early um, her early um, times of her dementia. And um, she was raised a very, uh, should we say, um, upper, upper middle class, um, uh, comes from a very refined family and, went to finishing school in Switzerland in the 40s and, you know, I studied um, a soprano um, with the great Totti Del Monte in Italy for five years in the 50s. And so she spoke many languages mm. and most of them fluently and one of them was French. So this time we had in, in France where she'd go every few years to try and find... Um, her brother's activity during the Second World War. She was a young girl when he was killed during the Second World War and she was very close with him. So I put my hand up to say, I will take you. She couldn't drive this time on her own. So we went and it was hilarious. You know, from, from one day to the next, we would get in the car for some days, three to five hours of driving and two days in particular, she would stop people, ask directions to this place. They would give directions. It's all in French. And she would say, no, I don't need to write it down. I'll remember it. And the one day we drove for about three hours and ended up back in the same place because <laughs> her dementia, she'd forgotten. <laughs> and it's like, man. Every day was <laughs> an adventure. Every day was an adventure. What, so, what's that um, yeah, that's in the, town, the, adventure before dementia. Yeah, adventure but before dementia. dementia. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, the, you know, the moral of the story never offer to put your hand up and take someone on a, an adventure around northern France with. Dementia, yeah. <laughs> Especially someone who insists on asking for directions because she can speak French and I couldn't. So, yeah. But, you know, so great memories throughout mm. my, my days with her. Yeah. Um, so Mary's fully responsible for guiding wow. me to this 
beautiful space. It's so like so well, I'm sure there's so much more to that story too, you know, mm. like throughout your life and like how that's all kind of led to that. But it's it's so interesting and I love I love that aspect about how you how long the creation story of Lundberg. Like yeah. it's just so <laughs> unique like that. Well, yeah, that's you know it's not like you were just going, Oh, I want to start a gallery and I looked at the real estate papers and I, you know, oh, shot around. I, I, oh, absolutely. It's, totally not, it's this total spiritual Oh, you know, absolutely. Story. And it's all about, you know, trusting and believing and, and just just being completely free and open and you know, I, I, I was ready to leave Sydney um, and I knew, you know, Amanda and I spoke about, and well, not spoke about, we actually found premises to open a small gallery in Sydney back in, in 2014. Mm -hmm. And then when we um, had a report from one of the neighbours of our, uh, you know, chosen space, they had indicated that, there was a huge Woolworths going in and that all of the units were going to be bulldozed within 12 to 18 months. And the agent's trying to get us to sign a five-year lease. <laughs> no way. Yeah, 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 yeah. Sounds yeah. like it might have be, been the same agent you used to have. Oh, no, that's not that <laughs> many air time. Who knows? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, but then, then what about um, – so? So Lundberg Gallery, mm -hmm. you know, we've had, you've had, you're in the middle of your second show. Mm -hmm. We went to the opening. It was amazing. Such a great vibe. Very, very well done. Thank you. So what, and what's, so what's the vision for, for Lundberg vibe? Um, well. It's probably, probably evolving, right? But it is evolving. Yeah. It is evolving. Um, obviously, uh, obviously or not, but I do. Um, have a vision for Lundberg. We do, Amanda and I have a vision for Lundberg. But the beauty of this this, this space, this place, this gallery, um, part of the ethos, part of the why, is that we are an all-inclusive gallery. We are fostering relationships with the artists from, a couple of the artists from the first show, couple of the artists from the current show and the idea is that we will grow as a family under the roof the umbrella of Lundberg and that all of the artists who become long-term family members of Lundberg will all have say in the curatorial aspect who comes in as Lundberg family members and, and so on. So at the moment, we are open for um, surprise and I've got the next f five or six shows planned. But until those shows actually take occupancy within the space, and the artists I start working with and getting to know were unsure of where Lundberg will go as far as the relationship with these artists, mm. who stays and who goes, you know. And I I love working like that. And Lundberg is about a collaboration. I love collaborating. I've been working with other artists again probably since the late eighties and collaborating period. I think it's just, there's so much to be said for it. I do love the hermetic life, but I also love <laughs> the inclusive. And um, that is the exciting part of Lundberg. That's the, the that's the unknowns of Lundberg. And that's, you know, that's what I love. We're a Magic. bit of a... We're, we're, that's right. When when people get together, it's, you know, something else is possible that that's isn't right. with one. That's right. I don't have all the answers, you know. Yes, I'm a curator, director, along with Amanda, the other director. But I don't have all the answers. Um, I don't want to come in 
to this space controlling everything because, you know, we're not in control. It's not up to us, man. You know. Mary might have something to say about that. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> but I, I think if we are open... <laughs> Thank you, Mary. I think if we're open and we remain open in our hearts and our eyes and our ears, you know, um, to the vision of Lundberg, I think this journey is going to be, well, it already is exciting, fresh. Mm. You know, every day it's fresh. And um, the other thing is, is that within the parameters, all those parameters, with, with, within, let's call it um, a ballpark, within the ballpark of, of, of Lundberg, and we have all the, you know, players, all, all the, you know, the individual souls just having fun in the ballpark. We are an anti-gallery in so much as we're, um, we're not about um, uh, restriction and, and we're not about... Um, It escapes me, but we we want to put artists before the gallery, rather than the gallery is in charge and the gallery lays down all the rules and the gallery, the gallery, the gallery. Being an artist and having experienced galleries on many levels over many years, there's never much space for an artist to fully perform what is generally required of them because of restrictions and parameters and egos and rules and what's the... Like the brand of the... Contracts. Like, yeah. Sorry, what were you saying? I was going to say like the brand of that space, you know, like it's got to be, you know, they want to curate it to their yeah, own. Yeah, 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 that sort of that sort of thing. I, I just want it to be... I want it to be loose... I want it to be, um, yeah, I just want it to be free-flowing, you know, like a piece of improvised jazz, you know. <laughs> I just, you, know cool. you know what I mean? Just just blow, man, just blow, you know. Yeah, well, that's something I wanted to ask as well, like because you're saying it's, a, you know, where this journey is going, but there's this long journey of your life that's led you to here, which includes... Yeah, I was going to ask about that too. Music, like, uh, <laughs> But, you know, you mentioned your parts of your childhood. Like, there's so much... Would like to yeah, like, how does, a, how does a drum and bass DJ and, and like, you know... And also you have this whole hospitality background. Mm. You know, you've worked in some pretty notable mm. hospitality oh, venues, mm. fine dining and... And all of that, and as we've heard some pretty funny stories about this time in your life, <laughs> but like, how how do you go from that to to, you know, through art and then becoming a, a gallery owner? Well, look, uh, the art is a, it's it's an ever present thing. It's it's not this thing didn't just arrive, you know. It's it's been ever present. Mm. Um, from day one. However, my involvement with it goes from 100% down to 25%. But I would say in the last two decades, it's been, you know, semi full throttle, 75, 80%. Um, I think for someone, as I said earlier, who rejoices in collaborating and bringing, teasing out aspects in other folk and bringing it to the table. I take great pleasure in doing that. I think I'm good at it. Yeah, totally. And I think that... To do that where I can still continue to bring to the table 
my gift as a maker, as an artist, rather than going and creating for other people, which is what I've done a lot of my life. I've made things possible for other people and they have gained financially, spiritually, what, mm. what have you. Now is time for me yeah, we. <laughs> to bring all my shit, man, yeah. from way back yonder to the party. That's it. You know, and it's, it's, it's about recognizing your lane or your lanes and knowing your, your parameters, knowing what you're good at. And, and then, you know, getting um, on this bus and getting into the driver's mm. seat. You, you, leave, you leave the doors open because you people to get on board, man, you know, they can drive the bus as well. I'm, man, yeah. You know. and, and you are definitely somebody who obviously is very comfortable with themselves and expressing themselves, mm -hmm. you know, with, mm -hmm. through your, your fashion, you know. Your, fashion? Your, well, I don't know. Style? What you your style. Your style. Your, style. your, your unique <laughs> style that yeah. is, is clearly like an expression of who you are. Like, mm -hmm. you know, and it's, there's a, um, you know, your, not the, I don't know what the better word is. Like, you know, you don't, that you don't need to apologize, but it's like very unapologetic in a way. It's like, cause you're very comfortable in, mm. in who you are. How has that been that kind of journey as an artist, but also, you know, who you are? Like, cause I'd, I'd love to have seen you back in the day as well, like as a, in these different forms, but oh. there's obviously many forms of, of Clive or, you know, you're in, on along your transformation, you know, journey. Um, <laughs> I'll give you an example. I remember my first, my first stint in Australia where I spent eight years. This was during the nineties. And I remember this cat had moved over here, this black guy who I'd heard about at this dinner party because he'd started dating one of the girlfriends of the host of the dinner party. And they said, oh, do you know him? And I turned around and said, what? Because us black guys all look the same to you and we should know each other. You know, just tongue in cheek. Everyone started laughing. And I said, no, I have no idea who this guy is. Anyway, about a month later, I'm in a bar or a club or something. And the girl in question who'd started dating this guy rocks up who I knew with him. And he said, I know you. And I said, okay, give it to me. He said, you used to ride around London in a pinstripe suit, with no <laughs> socks, brogues, and a, a top hat. And I said, close, it wasn't a top hat, but, and he said, <laughs> yeah. And I always thought, who is this cat? And that was probably seven, eight, 10 years earlier. So, um, yeah, people have their own, <laughs> ideas of, but that was lovely you know that was like you know yeah yeah right yeah I, I i get it um i don't know um yeah i've i guess i've always had my own vision of who i am and um i've never been one for following crowds i've never been into crowds i've never you know the idea of going to um dance party with 50,000 people freaks me out. I've never been to one. I've never been to a stadium concert. I just, I'm, I'm not good with crowds. Um, you know, for me, busy is when there's four or five people in a room, you know, but, um, what about your DJing though? Cause I imagine you would have played music yeah. in, a, in London, like, cause you're drum and bass, right? Drum well, and bass in no, London. No, no, I mean, I played, I played some drum and bass, but I wasn't a drum and bass DJ. Yeah, I was a broad. DJ that yeah. was very broad. And because I played, it's mainly here in, in Australia, actually, I was played, um, in, in the nineties and yeah, but you know, I had a lot of long-term residencies. The longest was six or seven years and mm -hmm. the others two, three, four year regular Friday, Saturday night, Thursday night stints. And, and yeah, there was, you know, a couple of um, gigs there where you're playing in front of a couple of thousand people, but it's different because you are providing 
the entertainment, mm. the source of of I I want to lose myself tonight kind of vibe. You're providing that for a collective. Um, it's like they're all in this room and you're outside with the controls to give them a great time or a shite time. It, it's not it's not the same as being in that room, you know? It's kind, it's kind, I guess there's kind of like a separation. Like if you're it a photographer a at a party, you've got like you're behind, you're observing. That's right. That's right. So, so I always had yeah. a turntable yeah. in between myself and the group. Yeah, yeah. And, and you were, you know, you you were you were either on a podium, you were either in a box. You were, so you were Separate. physically separated, isolated from, from them. You know, I do um, sit in auditoriums with 2,000 people. I, classical music's my thing, so I love um, big symphonic um, uh, performances. You know, Gustav Mahler's my hero. And you know, so going to a concert hall um, and, and sitting down with 1,000 or 1,500 people, you know, in an extraordinary acoustic space with 100 plus musicians and in um, the case of Mahler's Eighth Symphony, up to a thousand singers. Mm. Wow. That's a different buzz because you're in the space that you're occupying in your seat. There's no one jumping up and down, invading your space and banging into you while they're getting off on mm. their favourite tune, you know. And their favourite, and their favourite and their favourite disco biscuits, disco or whatever. biscuits, or whatever they're you know, <laughs> into. Um, so, <laughs> so yeah, just just sort of going back to that. You know, I, it, it's not that I've I've um, left myself short as far as entertainment goes by not going to these you know dance parties, and it's, yeah. it's just not my thing. But much joy has been had from many a concert all around the world. Yeah. Um, something that you were talking about before really resonated with me because we've just, we've definitely got to this place as well around when you were talking about like knowing your, you know, knowing, what you, knowing and knowing what you're good at and yes. knowing, and also like this time now to kind of like um, leverage that or, or, you know, to, to reap the rewards of all of the, the lessons that, you, mm -hmm. that you've learned mm -hmm. to get to the knowing. Mm -hmm. Um, cause we're definitely there too, you know, like we've, we've been, we've had our agency for like eight years mm -hmm. and we've helped a lot of other businesses succeed. You know, we've invested a lot. Often we're more invested in the potential of them than they can even see, you know, yeah. but then yeah. they end up selling the business, make, making quite a bit of money, you know, off the back of the work that we've done. And now we're in this, it's time where we're like, no, we're going to invest in wordplay. Like the podcast is one thing you know, spent more time kind of doing that. But mm. at the same time, you don't get to the knowing without all of the the failings and the, you know, you kind of have to get to that conclusion through all of those experiences. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And uh, I guess the question to you is on that, is just like, you know, what were, what were some of those key experiences or those key learnings that kind of may, got you to the place where you feel like, you learned what your strengths were or like, you know, I know, I know how I know now I'm like, these are my gifts and, and this is what I have to offer. And this is now my lane and where I'm, you know, I'm going to put my energy. Are there any particular things? Look, there's, there's, there's lots of things and, um, you know, I wouldn't know where to start to be honest, but what I know I can bring to this question is that only through being still and being in solitude and silence can who you are, who one is, reveal itself. And in the last three or four years, I, ha I have applied myself daily to the practice of stillness, solitude and silence, also known as meditation. And through those daily 
um, let's call it three S's, I have found more out about myself, about myself, um, than I would say in the last 45 years of my 57 years. And I guess, um, I guess what I'm trying to say is that answers and revelations have be, been made very prevalent during or after these periods in the last three or four years. And this has all led me to moving up into the Northern Rivers to open this space. Um, and in the early stages of Lundberg, you know, before I built the walls and when I was in there and it was my studio for the best part of two years and I was making in there and I was meditating in there and I was planning in there. And for the first time in my entire life, I started to realise exactly why I'm here. Mm. Always known why, why I'm here. But exactly why I'm here, that's, that's, that's something else. That's something else. So it's a culmination of all of those experiences, all of those journeys, all of those extraordinary times from, you know, being in Iraq eight weeks after the ceasefire of the 91 war, going out there as a social documentary photographer, not knowing anyone going out, connecting with this journalist and that writer and that producer, and then going off on my own on various days in this one particular day, and then being pulled into a vehicle by militia and then taken off to a place four hours south, landing in this room, not knowing what's going to happen, those experiences are all part of me being in the space today with the notion, the knowledge, the information that is now embedded within my spirit soul of why I'm here, what is my purpose. Um, so... To be able to sit here and say it's because of this, 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 and this would be incorrect. Mm. It's it's all of those things that have led me to this place now. And without those experiences, I wouldn't be Clive Sheridan sat here in this red hat and this top and feeling the way I do and moving forward just to adjust my back like that. <laughs> yeah. Do you, do you get Yeah, no, I yeah. get it. And I'm yeah. just thinking about that too, just even just like the imagery of that, of like all of this life experience and all of this, all of these things and then entering into like a, a black, a black um, concrete block, you know, literally just like a blank canvas, mm -hmm. just echoey and cavernous and you're in there you know, doing your doing your silent solitude and what was it? Silent solitude and stillness. Stillness, um, and yeah, playing around with the vision and and it, with your creativity and your art within this kind of blank space. Because it's like you could create have created anything in anything. there. That's right. That's right. Yeah, you know, <laughs> absolutely. Sorry, Tom. And you still can. And I still can. Yeah, yeah. That's and right. and we will. And you know, there, there's, you know, um, this this space has a name, but it doesn't have any set rules. It doesn't have, you know, in 2025 this must happen. In 2026 November, this also must happen. Not at all, you know. But what it does have is a vibration known as gratitude, belief, freedom, trust, all of those things that I guess many of us search for 
throughout our lifetimes, throughout our family times, throughout our work times, you know. And we are have been fortunate enough and gracious enough to have been given this space, this platform to create what it is I've been brought here to create and have been presented with some of the most beautiful souls along the way from yourselves to some of the friends who you met last week, Tom, some of the friends you've met, Ricks, over the last few months. And, you know, I intend to, to honour that. You know, I have to. You know, I'm not getting any younger. I'm about to turn 57 and... Yeah, I've made mistakes, many of them, and I've, I've done some great things and I've done some stupid things, but I also know now that it's time to harness all those beautiful experiences, all the madness. There's been so much madness in the past, fun madness and sad madness, and but there's been so much of it, and it's all for the purpose of creating this space that we are in now, that I'm in now, and to move it forward and to bring with it the people who are either involved in showing at the gallery or the people who aren't, two yeah. people here. and Yeah. Well, it's interesting. Sounding like an old hippie, aren't you? <laughs> <laughs> well, right. I'm just thinking, like, because, you know, from Rick's question, all these things that happen throughout your life make who you are. That's right. And it's usually hindsight that allows you to, you know, look back and see them, but mm -hmm. it's hard to be present at the time of when these things are actually happening and That's knowing, right. and being like, wow, this is actually that, like this is th this moment. Like I, I, I think that's when you're, well, for me anyway, it's like those moments where you're like truly inspired and you're, mm -hmm. you're present yeah. with this just amazing opportunity to be alive and create and do something mm -hmm. versus, you know, yeah, like years later and you look back and you're like, oh, I don't even know what, you know, what I've done. And it's like this this amazing and extremely difficult thing at times to be present. And um, I think, yeah, it sounds like meditation is, you know, there's many forms of meditation, but I haven't been too deep into proper, oh, I don't know what proper meditation is, but it sounds like you're doing like a very, um, you know, meditative. We need to do it more. Like yeah. we were just talking about this, right? Like visualization, visualization, mm -hmm. sitting and just visualizing mm -hmm. because if you can't see yourself doing something, it's very, you won't be doing it. It won't happen. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so so are, are they like the, like, well, first of all, how, how long have you been using meditation as a practice and, and what kind of like things do you do in these, you know, whilst you're sitting there well, in stillness and stuff? Okay. That's so private. But can what you give you, us some tips? What, yeah, can you, can you give of, us some kind of like insider? Or, <laughs> yeah, or, yeah. Um, well, I mean, someone asked me that, a friend actually, a couple of years ago, and I, I said, look, we, we, all, we all brush our teeth in the morning or most of us brush our teeth and the simple acts that can take a minute to three minutes, but no one would brush their teeth the same way, but they all, everyone brushes their teeth for the purpose of one thing. Really meditation is the same. Um, it's the, pretty much the purpose of one thing. And that is, we'll, we'll come onto that later, but for me to, say categorically, this is what one must do. I can say, well, to be able to brush your teeth, you need to go into the room where your toothbrush is. That's the first thing you have to do. But before you even do that, what have you got to do? Well, you got to have teeth. <laughs> No, that, that, that's 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 not what you got to do. You got to. What have you got to do before you go into the the bathroom? Brush your teeth. Yeah. Or you have to think that. 
You need to brush your yeah, teeth. You need to know that you have to brush your teeth. You've got to want to brush your teeth. Mm-hmm. Okay. You've got to want to brush your teeth. You've got to want to meditate. And I, people, I, I want to learn to meditate. Well, there's a problem there because you don't, you don't learn to meditate. You just meditate. But you've got to want to meditate. You've got to want to brush your teeth. So you go into the bathroom after you want. You go into the bathroom and you get your toothbrush. So the next thing is, is how do you brush your teeth? Well, it's, you put toothpaste on and you there's a bit of action. That's it, really. And the more you do that, the more you become proficient. And actually, what took you five minutes, you can do now in one or two minutes. And you um, have completed what's required for that task and it's very similar with meditation you go into the space you want to go into the space and the purpose of going into the space is to enter into the three s's as some of the great chaps and ladies call it um john o'donoghue and Eckhart Tolle and Tara Brach, um, solitude, stillness, and silence. And through an activity which is being still, and I can only really talk from my own meditation practice, because you can meditate while chopping on a chopping board. But that's not being still and it's not being silent. You know, to get the full gift of meditation, I believe you, you need to enter stillness, silence and solitude. And only at that time when, and I can give you a multitude of um, techniques to enable you to enter into stillness and silence but you'll find your own after a while well it could take a year but it doesn't matter once you enter into that space you are limitless and you're and and also during that time it's also about honouring and, and, and setting forth your gratitude through gracious um, mantras or wording or what, but gratitude and thanks. Giving gratitude and thanks is, is it's the first thing we need to do. But once we're, we enter this space, as I said, it's limitless of what is there on offer to us. And um, this, this for me, and again, I, I'm sort of flip-flopping around, but coming back to your original question, I started meditating unconsciously 30 years ago and used to meditate lying down for half an hour to an hour and didn't quite know what I was doing other than I needed stillness, silence, and solitude. And I did that for years and didn't do anything with it other than I need stillness, solitude, and silence. I didn't use those three words back then, but I, I needed quiet time. And, and yeah, I'd meditate lying down. And it was only a few years ago, um, through my own inner journey and work and, um, you know, the, I, I, there was a, a, a tapping at my door, you know, there's like, come on, you're ready now, you need to exercise this, this silent practice now, it's time. So I'd always wanted, but not wanted enough to bring this into 
a, a daily habit, a daily practice, but yeah, it'll change your life. I've definitely been, I think, like I've been doing different parts of meditating, I think, like breath work and, mm. but recently just been sitting, well, and, and I've like done a bit of, you know, guided meditations and things and Joe Dispensary sort of mm. things and, but there's something knocking at the moment going like the way, like the solutions aren't to, you know, what you're, where you're, what the potential you're trying to unlock isn't going to happen any other way than this, this way of nothing, you know, like doing this, nothing, doing nothing. Yes. Cause the thinking is like, it's, it's this, this, and, and I think after understanding a lot of it too, cause you're talking about gratitude and how it's like once you experience gratitude, that opens the possibilities to receive. Mm -hmm. So you it's can't vibrational. receive That's without right. having gratitude. That's right. So it creates that sort of energetic force field at the beginning of the, the day. Flow. It opens the flow. To be open That's to right. receive. That's right. So if you're closed, of course, there's going to be blocks. You're not going to ever get to something like there, there's going to be blocks yeah. that you just can't unblock until you shift that energy of mm. receivership. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, so it's, it, like, it's like I, I just went and did this training this like last weekend with, with the mana movement and one of the things they talked about was like flow and like, you know, if you've got bills, just pay them, just pay them. That's right. Just keep keep the flow going because that because it's got to flow out mm -hmm. to come back and flow That's back right. in. That's right. So if you're not flowing out with gratitude, mm -hmm. then you're not allowing that flow to come back That's in right. to be more grateful and to, to, to share more gratitude. Mm -hmm. So... It makes so much sense. It makes a lot of sense, and it and it puts you in like a a state of mind that's intentional, isn't it? Like, I guess you know you can still be intentional throughout your day, but once the day gets rolling and you got things, and you're more in that kind of just like doing mm -hmm. state, which can be quite meditative at times too. But yeah, I'm, I feel like there's that, that touching we, on the door at the moment in that, terms of yeah. you creating a a a, a time to just visualize in stillness mm -hmm. and i'm interested to see how that goes I think yeah we've been talking about this a bit like of like making time in the morning like studio time to just sit mm. the f it should be the first thing we do yeah mm. the first thing and i can only talk about my experience but i wake up i go into the bathroom actually i put the kettle on i make myself a liter of jasmine tea because i like it strong so it steeps the 30 minutes that I meditate. So while all that kettle's boiling, I go in, I tongue scrape, I clean my teeth. I just swirl my face. I'll shower after meditation, probably after breakfast or whatever. But And so that's my ritual. And then mm -hmm. kettle's boiled, make my pot of tea and I'll go and meditate. Do you sit? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. 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 And... Um, um, and I also have an area that I then go and journal. So I will journal 25 minutes to 45 minutes after. So it's a good hour to an hour and 15 minutes spent on being quiet. Mm -hmm. And journaling's such a great way to manifest and request and give gratitude as well. It's extraordinary, the power in journaling. So I highly recommend that mm. as a second practice actually changed my life probably more than meditation but on, on par my mom's into journaling isn't she yeah she's had a diary her whole life i mm -hmm. think and so did her mum. well having a diary and, and journaling it's not i yeah. mean yeah. there's 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 diarizing and there's journaling you know from what i'm talking about writing from spirit writing mm -hmm. you know this stuff that comes up comes through comes out to you know, keeping a diary is very different. More you know. Recalling than, than well, channeling. diarizing is is generally past. You know, that's it's, and we don't can't, past is gone. It's like you know, whereas journaling is very much about present. Um, can be a bit of future in there as well, but it's very much about present, mm -hmm. which is where we need to be <laughs> all the time. Yes. Yeah. Not easy. So you're just journaling with no, like you're trying to just. I'm not trying uh, anything. Yeah, like. Yeah, just fl yes, free flow. Just, you're 
There's no, it just there's no horse out. I don't yeah. sit there and go, hmm. oh yeah, it pours out. I'm talking four or five pages each morning, almost A4, just flows out. I've got books and books and books full. Wow. Do you do you look back at it? Like, Never. do you ever refer? Never. And what do you do with them? You just keep them, just keep these. Oh, they're piling up somewhere, you know, I've got a few piles of them. <laughs> Cuts, and you do have some pretty epic books at you know, at the gallery. Coming back to um, you, you, Tom's discussion with with uh, meditating, and um, you said something that piqued my uh, interest when you were saying about that's right. You were talking about the different forms of meditation or uh, practice mm. with the various influences and what have you, and. And you start to say, but I know that I need to do this. Look, I think it's great to have the assistance from external sources and, you know, people have their gurus and, you know, who's your guru? Well, it's in there, <laughs> you know. I don't have an external guru that gurus in there. And once you tap into there, you'll realise that you don't need to have that external because it's – it's there. Within. That's that's mm. what, that's what you can connect to, to source to. directly. Like that's you have right. the knowledge inside. That's right. That's right. And then w once you get to that place and realize that you will intuitively, spiritually, or just free form, you will hit this note. It's like wow, and you'll never forget. And that note is the note that you need to hit each day you go into your space. And, and and the first day you hit it, you'll never forget it. And you'll then hit that note every day for the rest of your life, as long as you continue to spend that time being still in solitude and silence. And, you know, I remember roughly when that time happened for me. I had... Um, you know, friends saying, look, you should do this and you should do that and listen to this person, listen to that person. And I knew that I couldn't take any hardcore directive off anyone because it ultimately that's not what it's about. It can assist you. It can be this little use as a platform even. But to enter into that space where you 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 then hit that note for the first time because that's what it's about is is what you want and and what your you know if you if you're going to use the the line what I'm searching for or looking for in the early days of you being still in solitude and silence meditating is that place that warm place, that numb place, that place called connecting to God, source, whatever you want to call it, he, her, master, whatever. But when that happens, you know that all of those techniques, methods, that person that's just taken $2,000 off you because they've given you a mantra and this is but you know in three months' time or a year's time that mantra will be gone and you'll be entering into this space without any of this stuff because you hit that sweet note, you find that tune, that note that all those musicians strive for. Yeah, we're talking about that too, attunement. Attunement of like tuning your like – your mind or, or like your self attunement is different. Like it's like that it's tuning in like, in like Vibration. perfect harmony with resonance, mm -hmm. you know, of like your, like I saw a little cartoon. It was like a guy it was a guitar, like strumming, you know, tuning himself, but like, it was like the head and the, the heart, <laughs> like tuning to the right mm. when you're in attunement. Mm. Mm. Vibration. You're in harmony. like perfect resonance. Yeah. yeah. Vibrational harmony. Yeah. Yeah, but it is it is one of the most beautiful gifts that we can um, 
enter into the space within that silence and the time that we allot to ourselves for the honouring and the graciousness of that act. It's the most beautiful thing I think that's ever happened to me, you know. And coming into the space of purity and and truth, and there's no bullshit, and there's no noise, and there's no, you know, ah, you know, it, it, you're in this place of purity and, and honesty and freedom, and you know, on the other side of fear is freedom. It's so true, and. And that's it. And that's what, you know, we, we, we need that. We need that. And only from that can the harmony within start to take place. And yeah, anyway, I'm banging on like an old hippie again. And uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we, love we, love we love it. <laughs> yeah. But as you were just talking there, it like really made me feel what... Lundberg is to another level mm. after hearing your full, like your words just then. I'm like, oh, that is the the feeling you get when you enter Lundberg in a way, isn't it? It's like this sort of. Well, I can only speak for myself, and then the words of other friends who have said said similar to what you're saying. So that's that's beautiful. I, you know, the more I hear that, the more I, I feel like you know want to get more people in there to experience that but you'll only experience that if you're open and mm. you aren't full of noise you know and you might not make it there until you are open yeah, yeah right. you won't be attracted to the space the because you wouldn't be in vibration with it <laughs> and there is that aspect of it too isn't there like the going back to that blank cav canvas of the space yeah. and the the concrete mm. blocks you know mm. it's like when the show's done it's like you're clearing that out. Mm. It's fresh, mm. Mm. you know, for something new. Mm. 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 In Absolutely. the same way, like if you're meditating, you know, like you're clearing, you're mm. clearing out and then yes. manifesting, creating something creating. new. Yes, yes, yes. Absolutely. And and that's it. I mean, you know, you, 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 you hit the nail on the head, um, both of you in your comments there. That, that, that is... That is what Lundberg, that's the foundations of Lundberg and that's how both Amanda and I intend to drive Lundberg or steer it or have it be steered mm. forward into dates that aren't quite in the now <laughs> <laughs> where I can only really comment on the now. but. Yeah. Yeah, that is exactly it. That is exactly it. And when you think back to our conversation an hour ago about how Lundberg came about through Mary, and it couldn't really be driven any other way. It couldn't. It couldn't exist in any other way. It wouldn't be right. It 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 it, it would it would be out of of kilter with what it what it is and what it's meant to be mm. and and how it's meant to function and and vibrate what do people need to know about lundberg coming up you know if people want to visit or you know if they're local or if they're um, not local if they're not local yeah well it's it's always that as I, I would do with any space that i want to go to whether it's a, a gallery or a restaurant or you know there's a website, there's an Instagram page, there's a Facebook page. Go on. Don't get in your car and drive three hours because we may be closed because this space does close in between shows. And it's going to be closed for a period of eight weeks in between um, the end of this current show, Silence, which is a very beautiful photographic show of five photographers, myself included. And the third show, entitled Salon, which is a very loosely curated but fun show with about 20-plus artists and a lot of work. It's going to be a big, big show to physically curate. And when, when does that? 
Um, we are going to confirm in the next 10 days, um, the end of November to the first week of December, we'll launch that show. Yeah. The current show ends on the 24th of September. September. So it's two weeks tomorrow. During that eight-week period that Lundberg is closed, there's going to be some workshops and other activities taking place, but all will be uh, made very clear on the website and okay. on our Instagram page, lundberggallery.com. Okay. And, uh, and the Instagram? Instagram? Yeah. Lundberg Gallery, just on the outskirts of Mwollombar, on the new industrial estate. So we're three kilometres from the centre of Mwollombar, or three and a half, I think, um, on the new industrial estate on Lundberg Drive. With a pretty amazing view of yes. Wollumbin and Wollumbin across heading. Extraordinary view. But you just face west pretty much, don't you? Yeah. You get the beautiful sunset. You certainly do. Oh, it's, it's special. It's special. It is. Yeah, and the first day that I experienced that was, you know, after I was there in the morning, then I went back in the evening and I was there for the sunset. No, I was actually... Um, I was at um, Tweed Regional for that sunset, I believe. Yeah. And then I went back to the gallery afterwards. So cool. There's so many good things happening around. Isn't there? Mabar. I love yeah. Mabar. <laughs> I love yeah. it. We're, we're, yeah, we've all we've sort of gravitated here for various reasons and it's great. It's, yeah. look, you know, it's a special place. It's going to be exciting to see what this, what unfolds within and around this town over the next five years. Yeah, I think so. It's a good beautiful time. Beautiful foundations being laid now. Yeah, with, with a lot of exciting people and projects, and a lot of change as well. Like it feels like a lot of the businesses in in the main street there have been for sale and are changing hands as well. So, yes, yes. so that's yeah. a bit of movement yeah. in town. Interesting. Yeah. yeah. Uh, yeah, and I, I, I think it's it's all for the good, you know. I don't think you know a few people are saying, "Oh, it's sad that so and so's gone. They've been there for thirty years." Well, that's called change, you know. That's called the flow. Progression. That's called the flow. That's called, you know, um, stagnation. No, thank you. You know. Yeah, and it, well, it definitely doesn't have a stagnant energy around. No. Well, in part, does it? There's so much, so much um, energy, just cre and creative energy too, isn't it? It's mm. not just like. Mm. It's a very particular sort of, uh, like I think people have gravitated here to create things and, and intentionally come here from somewhere else, you know, because it wasn't for them and for some reason Merbar is, you know, and <laughs> so it's been such a, a great pleasure meeting you. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> The feeling is mutual. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Excited to see what uh what comes comes of it. Yeah. And what what about us, Tom? Where can where can people find yes more about design on, design, design on purpose and wordplay? Well, you found us already somehow if you're listening to this. Uh, but we are on Spotify. We're on YouTube for the full length. Um, you know. Uh, format to these podcasts the videos obviously on youtube and the, the audios on spotify uh we're on instagram design on purpose or on tiktok design on purpose and the audio is also on all the podcast, all the channels, podcast channels isn't yeah, it of course yeah it's on apple and all google that play stuff. and so all that all the all the podcast streaming services you'll find us there you can also find our design agency wordplay studio at www.wordplaystudio.com Check it out. Just launched a new website. Yes. Yes, we've got a new website. Exciting. Yes. Got some new case studies coming. New case studies, yes. Few few ones about to come straight off the stove soon, so it's good. <laughs> <laughs> and um yeah, we'll be uh we'll be back again with another episode soon enough next week or whenever you're listening to this episode, there'll be more after this. So with more special guests like Clive and all the other awesome people we've had on this show. So Stay tuned and thank you so much, Clive. It's a pleasure thank was you. all mine. Thank you for having me on. Thank you very much. And um and yeah, get out to Lundberg if you're in the area, in the local area. If not, follow online and you know, when you're around, you know where to go. Beautiful. <laughs> <laughs> thank you. Awesome. Thank you. Thanks, guys. <laughs>